The foreign exchange market, currency market or simply forex is the market where one currency is traded for another. Some of the market participants exchange foreign currency for their own, like multinational corporations which must pay wages and other expenses in different nations they sell their products in. However, a large part of this market are simply currency traders who make money on movements and exchange rates, just like stock traders speculate on price changes for stocks. So why trade Forex? The Forex market is by far the biggest and the most popular financial market in the world. Traded globally by a large number of individuals and organizations, its average daily trading volume exceeds 5 trillion US dollars. It's a 24-hour market. It's open from Monday morning in Australia till Friday afternoon in USA. That means you can trade morning, noon, night, during breakfast or even after you go for your night snack at 3 a.m. No commissions, no exchange fees, no government fees and no brokerage fees. Most forex brokers earn money from spread, which is the difference between a bid rate and ask rate. No middlemen. There are no middlemen between the trader and the broker. Therefore, the trader is at liberty to execute his trades online without having to go through a central exchange, saving time and additional fees. Leverage gives trader the ability to control much larger total contract value than his initial deposit. As some brokers offer 500 to 1 leverage, you can only deposit $25 to control more than $12,000 worth of currencies and start trading straight away. Free practice. Most online forex brokers offer free demo accounts to practice trading and build your skills, along with real-time forex news and charting services so you can get a feel of live trading without risking any real money. Why not to trade forex? Well, there really is no reason not to give it a try. I used to think you had to be some kind of genius or a nerdy guy with a degree in economics to be a successful trader, but I soon learned that's not the case. I believe everyone can do it, and with a little bit of patience you will be able to do it too. Although it's true the forex market is open 24 hours a day, it doesn't mean you should trade every single minute of this time. Forex trading day can be structured in three trading sessions. First of them is Asian trading session. It starts at 12 a.m. and ends at 8 a.m. Usually in this session, exchange rates tend to range a lot, making it great for short day trades or waiting breakouts later in the day. You will probably see more movement in all the yen based pairs like dollar yen, euro yen, and Aussie yen, and other Asian currency based pairs like Aussie dollar, Kiwi dollar, and Euro Aussie. At 7 a.m., the European session starts. And because about 30% of all forex transactions come from London, you can see a lot of movement in most of the currency pairs. Volatility tends to quiet down in the middle of this session, around 12 p.m. when traders are taking break waiting for the New York session to start. Just when the European traders are getting back from their lunch, US traders start coming to their offices. As at the first half of the US session overlaps with the European session, it's usually the most liquid time of the day. At around 5 p.m. you can often see rates to retrace because London traders are closing their positions to avoid any overnight surprises. And after 5 p.m. market tends to quiet down till the Asian session opens again. Sometimes it can seem the traders have their own language. They use words that probably make no sense for a non-trader. For example, imagine you would hear a conversation like this. I'm going short on cable, but I'm also watching Guppy. How about you? Well, I'm currently flat, but I'm looking to go long on channel. What these traders actually meant was, I'm selling pound dollar and looking for trade opportunities in pound yen. How about you? Well, I currently don't have any positions open, but I'm looking for opportunity to buy euro pound. Here are some of the most common forex slang words. Going long, placing a trade which is going to profit if the exchange rate rises. Going short, placing a trade which is going to profit if the exchange rate falls. Being flat, being neither long or short, having no positions opened in the market. Aussie, Australian dollar, Kiwi, New Zealand dollar, Looney, Canadian dollar, Greenback or Buck, US dollar. Swissy, Swiss franc, cable, pound dollar, 
fiber, euro dollar, yuppie, euro yen, guppy, pound yen, channel, euro pound. If you were only able to trade for example one euro at a time, you would never make any real profit. That is why in forex market currencies come in lots. One micro lot is 1000 units, one mini lot is 10,000 units, and one standard lot is 100,000 units. You're probably thinking right now, I don't have that kind of money, does that mean I should not be trading? This is where the leverage comes in. Forex brokers offer up to 500 to 1 leverage. It means that to open a one standard lot large position, you only need to have about $300 in your account. Let's take a look at this example. Exchange rate for euro dollar is 1.3000. You have your margin set up at 0.2%. You decide to buy one standard lot, so you're buying 100,000 euros, which is worth $130,000. As your current margin is 0.2%, your broker sets aside $260 from your account. You can consider this as a down payment that your broker asks to let you borrow the rest of the money needed to open a position. Of course, after you close your position, the money is returned to you, along with your profit or loss for this particular trade. Just remember that high leverage means you are susceptible to large losses as well as gains. A pip is a measurement of the amount of change in the exchange rate for a currency pair. For currency pairs displayed to four decimal places, one pip is equal to 0 0.0001. The exception here is all the yen-based pairs, which are quoted with only two decimal places. Nowadays, some brokers offer fractional pips or pipettes to provide extra precision and are displayed as a fifth decimal place. How to calculate your pip value? The value change in quote currency divided by the exchange rate times the amount of units traded is pip value. Let's take a look at this example. The exchange rate for euro dollar is 1.3000. The value change in quote currency 0 0.0001 divided by the exchange rate 1.3000 times the amount of units traded, for example, one mini lot, which is 10,000 units, is 0.76 euros. To convert this to your account currency, all you have to do is multiply this with your currency's exchange rate. So, if you're living in USA, all you have to do is multiply 0.76 with 1.3000, which is 0.98 US dollars. In Forex, you exchange one currency for another in expectation that the currency you bought will gain value against the currency you sold. In every single Forex transaction, there are always two currencies involved. That's because you simultaneously buy one currency and sell another one. The first listed currency is called the base currency. The second listed currency is called the quote currency. Exchange rate tells you how much you have to pay in units of the quote currency to buy one unit of the base currency. In this example you would have to pay 1.36 dollars to buy one euro or you would get 1.36 dollars if you sold one euro. All forex quotes are listed with two prices. The bid is the price at which your broker is willing to buy the base currency in exchange for the quote currency. The ask is the price at which your broker will sell the base currency in exchange for the quote currency. The difference between these two prices is called the spread. So if you want to sell euro, you will sell at the bid price at 1.3598 and if you want to buy euro, you will buy at the price 1.3600. An order is an instruction from trader to broker that shows the way how trader wants to enter or exit the market. Here are some of the most common types of orders. A market order is an order to buy or sell immediately at the best available price. This type of order guarantees that the order will be executed. 
Just remember that in a fast moving market, the price paid or received may be quite different from the last price quoted before the order was entered. A limit order is an order to buy or sell at a specific price. A buy limit is an order to buy at a limit price. This price will always be below current market price. Let's take a look at this example. Trader wants to buy euro dollar, but he's only ready to buy if he can do it more cheaply. A sell limit is an order to sell at the limit price. This price will always be above the current market price. Trader wants to sell, but he's only ready to sell if he can sell at a higher price. A stop loss order is an order to buy or sell once the price reaches a specified price. It is designed for the purpose of preventing additional losses if price goes against you. This is most important order of all. Let's see why. If you bought euro dollar at the price 1.30 and you were wrong, it happens. Price started to fall. If you had set your stop loss order at 1.2980, your broker would automatically close your position with only 20 pip loss. If you hadn't set your stop loss at all, the price could have just kept falling until you lost all the money that's in your account. You wouldn't want that, right? So always use stop loss orders. The theory for technical analysis is based on presumption that you can forecast future price movements by studying the past market data. As it's believed that all current market information is reflected in price, you can assume that all you need to make a trade is price action. Technical analysts study charts to look for the patterns and believe that in similar situations price will act the same way as before. For example, as price has bounced off this level several times before, a technical analyst would think it will also do the same the next time price reaches this level and set his sell orders here. The thing is, as more and more traders look for the certain price levels and patterns, the higher the probability that these patterns will play out the way they think. And why is that? Because technical analysis is based on psychology. A chart is nothing more than a picture of human emotions. The market moves because of two primal emotions, greed and fear, which in effect compels humans to repeat the past triumphs and mistakes. Just remember that technical analysis is very subjective. Just because you see some pattern on the chart doesn't mean the rest of the traders will interpret it the same way. Fundamental analysis is a method to forecast future price movements by analyzing the overall state of economy and considers factors like interest rates, production, employment, housing and manufacturing. Fundamental analysts believe that market may misprice a currency in the short run, but the correct price will eventually be reached. They make profit by purchasing a mispriced currency and then waiting for the market to recognize its mistake and then reprice the currency. In theory, if a country's future economic outlook is good, their currency should get stronger. So why is that? If a country's economy is improving, they may need to raise interest rates to control growth and inflation. Higher interest rates can attract foreign investors looking to buy country's financial assets. In order to do that, they first need to purchase this country's currency. And higher demand means higher price. So the value of this currency increases. Let's take a look at this very recent example. In August 2013, exchange rate for a pound dollar was around 153. The Bank of England mentioned that because of the unsustainable inflation levels, they may need to raise the interest rates in 2015. Only 8 months later, the exchange rate had rocketed to 169, a head-spinning move for 1600 pips. Look at the most popular types of charts. Line charts are drawn by simply connecting the session's open, high, low or closing prices in one single line. The main advantage of this type of chart is that it's extremely clean. It filters out a lot of market noise and gives clear support and resistance levels. Bar charts shows us the open, close, 
low and high prices for each given session. The horizontal line on the left shows the opening price. The bottom of the vertical line shows the lowest price of that specific time period. The top of this line shows the highest price of that specific time period. The horizontal line on the right shows the closing price. This is the most popular type of charts. In most of the trading literature you'll find, charts will be displayed exactly like this. Candlestick charts display the same information as bar charts, but the visual representation is a lot better. The big blocks are called real bodies. The vertical lines above these blocks are upper shadows, and the lines below are called lower shadows. Usually, if the real body is in lighter color, the currency closed above its opening price. But if the real body is in a darker color, the currency closed lower than it opened. Don't worry about the colors for now, because in most of the trading platforms you can easily customize them as you like. The main advantage over any other charting technique is the excellent visual representation that the candlesticks provide. It shows clearly who's in control, bulls or bears. I can't say any of the chart types is better than others, but I would advise beginners to stick with candlesticks for now. Support and resistance are two of the most popular concepts in technical analysis. It states that there are certain price levels that act as a barrier and makes the price stop and reverse. Support is a level that prevents the price from being pushed downwards. Resistance is a level that prevents the price from being pushed upwards. There are three golden rules you need to know about support and resistance. The more times support or resistance levels have been tested, the stronger they get. It happens because the more obvious the level is, the more traders will be placing their buy or sell orders there. When a support or resistance level breaks, the stronger it has been, the stronger the follow through for the next move will be. In theory, every support should become resistance, and every resistance should become support. Here you can see that price was rising and met resistance. When it broke through, it tested the same level from the upside and it became as new support. The same can be seen in a downtrend. Price was falling, it met support, and when it managed to break through, it tested this level as the new resistance. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel so you don't miss our next week's video about different types of support and resistance.